So far we've just been working with hard-coded data, which is not usually realistic. Most of the time you've got some REST or real-time backend server that you sync with. Ember data can help us out with that. I've got a skeleton app uh, here of an address book. On the left, I've got a list of contacts. When you click them, we display the contacts details, contacts, details on the right. Uh, in this episode, we'll see how Ember data can help us populate this list from a RESTful service, and then we'll do editing in a later episode. So you can see I've just got this one route that fills in here. Templates are pretty normal looking. Just iterate over all my contacts, link to them here, and then uh, display the details template there. So the first thing that we do with Ember Data is configure what's called a data store. We'll talk about that a little bit more after I type this out. So we extend the uh, ds.store object. I give it a revision. This is just a development thing right now while Ember's under heavy development. And then we configure an adapter. And I've got this Heroku app here. And that's it for our store. So the data store, uh, this guy, is the primary interface between you and your persistence layer. It's essentially a bookkeeping object that indexes all your models and then gives them to you when you ask for them. And then this adapter is responsible for translating a request to the store for a model into the appropriate action to take against a persistence layer. So in other words, when we ask for a contact with a certain ID, it will convert uh, that into an AJAX request and get that data from the server and populate the model with that information. So ideally, you can swap out adapters without changing any of your application code, which is really slick. Next, let's configure our model. So our model is called uh, contact and we uh, extend the DS model object for this. Then we configure some attributes with the, the DS adder method. Uh, we make a few of these. So we'll keep track of the first name, last name, uh, avatar, GitHub account, Twitter, and then some notes, I guess. That's probably enough. So uh, this method, it does a few things, but most of the point is to say, hey, these, these attributes of my model should be persisted. And so if they ever change, and then you synch synchronize this model with the server, it'll just send these attributes and nothing else that's on your model. So now there's only one more thing to do, and that's to plug this model into our route. So instead of handing uh, the app this fake data, we tell it to go find all of our contacts. So this will send off a request for all of the contacts. And then in our contact route, we uh, tell it to find just one. And remember from previous episodes, this Contact ID comes from our dynamic segment up here in our URL. So this gets passed through into these parameters and then we can go and find this contact. So that's it. If I hit run, uh, it made a request to the Heroku app and we've got all of our contacts. You may be wondering where all of the events are because when we go and ask for Eric Berry here, uh, that's an asynchronous event. So what's going on? Well, when we make a call to find, it will always return a model. So it'll send the request, but return a model with empty attributes immediately. And then since our template is bound to the model data, it will populate with the model attributes as soon as the request lands. But we don't have to think about any of that then any subsequent call to find Eric, um, once it's already been fetched, this find method will just return uh, the same object that it got in the first place. 
So there's no need to ever visit the server again once you've got a resource. This makes for really efficient and really snappy applications. Since this model hook is so common, it's actually the, de the default behavior number. So we can just wipe this out completely and our app will continue to work just the way it did before. So how does it know where to find all these people? It's pretty interesting. If you call to string on uh, Ember objects like app.contact, oops, it has some introspection here. And so the REST adapter will use this introspection to build the URL. Now if we watch the network panel, and I click on Stanley and refresh this, you can see it makes a request off to contacts to find all of our contacts and uh, contact slash ID to go and find Stanley. And again, it's doing that because it knows um, what this object is called. So let's take another look at the code. It's pretty unbelievable that we get so much functionality from so little code here. That's it. Enjoy Ember Data.